Rangers are the shock troops of the U.S. military. Got an airfield that needs seizing? Need an enemy position wiped from the face of the earth? Send for the Rangers. Everyone standing who is not wearing the same uniform you are has to be dead. The modern Ranger has the pick of the best military tech. He can keep heads down with a belt-fed M249. He can pick off targets with a semi-automatic sniper rifle. Or smash a big hole with a Javelin anti-tank missile. Skip back to the early American frontier, Rogers Rangers had to tailor their tactics to the weapons at hand. Rogers Rangers used a musket very similar to this, a replica of the Brown Bess. It's a 75 caliber musket, good out to about 100 yards. The Brown Bess was a smoothbore musket. The absence of rifling to put spin on the bullet meant that it was not an accurate weapon. The big problem with this is it has a maximum range of 50 meters. So as you fire this thing, the bullet literally bounces down the barrel, and the last bounce it takes is the direction it's going to go. Two hundred years later, an accuracy is no problem. U.S. Army Rangers get the pick of pinpoint rapid-fire weapons for their missions. Rangers had a characteristic, a, a trait if you'd like, that you had an individual had the right to choose the weapon he wanted to go into combat with. The M1 Garand and M1 Carbine were Ranger favorites in two major conflicts. They have to carry everything needed for survival far from home. That includes ammunition. Rangers like accurate weapons with a high rate of fire. Rangers are light infantry. They favor light weapons such as the M1 Carbine. The Carbine was only 35 inches long and weighed a mere five pounds. A combination of accuracy, compact size, and high rate of fire seemed to make it the ultimate Ranger weapon. But the pistol caliber lacks stopping power. If you were to shoot me with this and I find out about it, I'm gonna be very angry. The bullet is a pistol at cartridge. The M1 carbine was actually designed to replace the pistol, offering the shooter greater accuracy. A carbine, if you look at it as replacing the pistol, it's a very good weapon. In other words, it'll shoot up to 100 yards. Let's see if we can uh, take out some of these red balloons. Not bad. Let's see if we can uh, repeat that test and use a 45 automatic pistol. Much tougher with a handgun. As this demonstration shows, the M1 carbine was much easier to shoot than the same caliber handgun. Not only did the M1 make the Ranger more deadly, he got to carry less ammo. The M1 carbine's bigger brother was the M1 Garand. It was the standard infantry weapon in World War II and Korea. Five and a half million were produced in four decades of service. Its combination of accuracy, semi-automatic fire, and rifle caliber made it the number one Ranger weapon. Most people chose the M1 Garand some officers chose carbines, but most of them carried the M1 because it was a much more powerful weapon. I'm speaking to you. The adoption of John Garand's semi-automatic rifle in 1936 put the U.S. Army at an advantage over every other country in World War II. The United States Army is the only army in World War II that gives everybody a semi-automatic weapon. So every time you pull the trigger, it fires a round. Uh, I probably cleared that magazine in about 10 to 12 seconds. The more firepower that you can put out to suppress the enemy's firepower will, will lead you to victory on the battlefield. The accuracy of the M1 Garand proved itself on the Korean battlefields. In the winter of 1950, Ralph Puckett's Rangers stumbled on a force of 300,000 Chinese. We relied on that great rifle in combat. We were certainly relying on it on the night of November the 25th and 26th when the Chinese mounted their first assault on our position. The aimed rapid fire of the Garand kept the Chinese at bay all night. A badly wounded Ralph Puckett was able to escape with his life. My riflemen in our frontline foxholes 
were firing single shots at those Chinese as they assaulted up the hill. And I called in an artillery concentration and also called in flares, which illuminated the battlefield and allowed my rangers to pick out individual Chinese rather than just firing blindly into the darkness. General Patton described the M1 as the finest battle implement ever created. The only weakness was a single design quirk that let an important secret out of the bag. When you had fired all eight rounds, the clip was automatically ejected with a loud twang. Sometimes people felt that the enemy could hear that. So it's sort of like saying, I'm out of ammunition. If they could count under the pressure of combat, they would fire seven rounds and then silently remove that spent round and put another clip in. Take an enemy clip, throw it down on the ground, and when the enemy stuck their head up, you shot them. The M1 Garand is the father of all U.S. Army and U.S. Ranger semi-automatic rifles. The M14 carried on the legacy, and now the M16 dynasty forms the backbone of both the Rangers and U.S. Army. But sometimes a rifle alone just isn't enough. The Ranger always has to balance firepower with what they can carry when things get hot. One firearm that trod a fine line between man portability and high lethality was the legendary BAR. Primary application of the BAR is as an individual weapon. It is light enough that a single soldier can carry it and employ it against the enemy. Crucially, the BAR operator didn't have to carry tons of special heavy ammunition. The Browning automatic rifle laid down suppressive fire in the same 30 6 caliber as the Garand. An individual would carry a number of these magazines on his belt, loading them with the same ammunition as used in the rest of the squad's weapons. The M249 saw is the legacy of the BAR. The belt-fed 249 fires the same 5.56 round as the M16 and M4 carbine, but in full machine gun mode, 750 rounds a minute. The Rangers rely on rapid firepower, but sometimes they need heavy ballistics to blitz the bad guys. It's good to be able to reach out and touch those who are causing you problems. 